What is up, Core Addicts? Welcome back to the Alpha Capability Testing Series for the new Meibatsu Monstrosity, the Declasse Walton L35, and the Vapid Rattel as well. So these three off-roaders are part of the San Andreas Mercenaries update, and I figured I'd put all three in one video to make it just easier for you guys and just not have it in three separate videos. So this off-road test is an update to my off-road capability testing series where I've tested the majority of off-road capable vehicles in GTA Online. So I will leave a link to a playlist down below in the pinned comment where you will find all the other vehicles I've done already so that you can compare. So before we start, if you have any questions as to how each obstacle is scored, please refer to the tutorial video which is linked in the description. Also remember that the most updated spreadsheet with all of the off-road capability scores for all vehicles I've tested so far will be linked in the pinned comment as well. So the monstrosity is primarily based on the Mitsubishi Pajero Evolution and it has a price of just under 1.5 million. The Walton is primarily based on a lifted Chevy S10 and has a price of just under 1.7 million. And finally, the Vapid Rattel is primarily based on the Brentho Class 1 Buggy and has a price of just under 1.9 million. So, so these vehicles are not very cheap, especially when you factor in the upgrades you're spending close to, if not more than $2 million for each one, which is just crazy. But anyways, the following points for each obstacle will be out of 10 possible points. Each vehicle is fully customized with visual upgrades that provide the most ground clearance. And also, all these vehicles have the stock suspension as well. And to note, I will be testing the fully upgraded monstrosity with and without HSW, so technically I will be doing a total of four vehicle tests in this video. So starting off with the regular monstrosity, we have the incline test from a flat surface. The monstrosity has good acceleration, but it just lacks torque. It makes it right between red block number 5 and 6, which gives it a 5.5 out of 10. In stage 2 of this test, where it started at an angled position, it makes it to red block number 4, but not quite close enough to red block number 5, which gives it a 4 out of 10 for this test. If we take both those scores, we get an average of 4.75 for the incline test, which probably seems a bit underwhelming, but this is a pretty average score. Now compared to the HSW variant, obviously that one has a lot more power with all the HSW upgrades, so it makes it to red block number 6 compared to the 5.5 of the regular one. For stage 2 of this test, it makes it to red block number 5, which again is better than the score of the 4 that the regular one received. And for the average score for this test, it receives a 5.5 compared to the 4.75 that the regular one received. Next up, we have the dirt incline test. So with the great acceleration and grip that it has, it rockets to the top without any hesitation, which gives it a 10 out of 10. And as for the HSW variant, it's pretty much the same thing, with a little more power, slightly faster, so same exact score here, 10 out of 10. Continuing to dirt braking, it's actually really good, which is very surprising. It stops well before the markers at the bottom, which gives it a 10 out of 10. And the HSW variant is about the same. Now when it comes to braking downhill, the HSW brakes provide little to no benefit compared to the maxed out normal brakes because it becomes more of like a game of traction and also the weight of the vehicle rather than just, you know, the full power of the brakes. Rock crawling for the monstrosity is pretty good. It mainly struggles with its lack in ground clearance, but once it gets those tires onto a rock, it just pulls really hard at almost anything you throw at it. Now through all three obstacles, it unfortunately bottoms out a total of seven times, again, due to its poor ground clearance, which is a big factor in the score. It gives it a three out of 10 for stage one of this test. However, in stage two of this test, which is subjectively scored, it has little to no hesitation once it finally gets a tire on top of those rocks, but it's not perfect, so it gets an 8 out of 10 for stage 2 of this test. If we take both those scores, we get an average of 5.5 out of 10 for the rock crawling test, which is pretty impressive considering the lack of ground clearance this thing has. And when it comes to the HSW variant, it performs identically. Remember that rock crawling is all low speed, torquey stuff. So again, that's the same exact average score of 5.5 out of 10.
powertrain is very good for the monstrosity. No wheel spin at all throughout the entire obstacle, which gives it a perfect 10 out of 10 for this test. And the HSW variant, again, performs identically. No wheel spin either. Again, 10 out of 10. Next up we have the bumper clearance test, so considering the clearance of the monstrosity really isn't the best, it surprisingly scrapes only once during this which gives it an impressive 9 out of 10 for this test. And of course the HSW variant is going to be the same exact score because this has nothing to do with speed, so 9 out of 10 as well. Suspension travel is very surprising. According to the markers, it gets a 6 out of 10, which is above average. So remember that this obstacle mainly tests how much the suspension expands over its stock ride height, and this one has a pretty substantial travel as you can see. And of course, HSW variant, same thing, 6 out of 10 here. High speed stability is very good considering it's a smaller vehicle with not much ground clearance, it gets a 7 out of 10 for this test, which is about the same stability as the Coil Brawler. And as to be expected, the HSW variant is exactly the same since the suspension is unaffected. Next up we have the deep water testing. And I am thoroughly surprised how well the monstrosity performs. For stage 1 of this test, it makes it to the end, which gives it a 10 out of 10. And in stage 2 of this test, which is the deeper side, the monstrosity struggles a bit, basically doing a wheelie underwater, but it still somehow makes it to the end, which gives it a 10 out of 10. Very impressive. If we take both those scores, we get an average of 10 out of 10 for the deep water test. And for the HSW variant, it's the same thing, but with a bit more speed. It completes both obstacles and gets a 10 out of 10. And this is very impressive. Usually only the larger off-roaders are able to complete stage 2 of this test. And considering how small this thing is, it makes it the only vehicle of this size that's actually been able to do that. So, very impressive for sure. Now something I do want to mention is that the HSW variant does offer a snorkel upgrade, whereas the regular one does not offer a snorkel upgrade. And for those of you wondering, not surprisingly, like most of the vehicles in GTA, the snorkel unfortunately does not work, and the vehicle will die if you leave it in the deeper water for too long. And finally, we have the dirt acceleration test. So this path is roughly a quarter mile long. Using the handbrake launch, it gets a very quick 12 second quarter mile, which is very impressive. That gives it an 8 out of 10 for this test. And as for the HSW variant, it's of course a lot quicker, completing this test an entire second quicker with an 11 second quarter mile, which gives it a very impressive 9 out of 10 for this test, and actually makes it the new fastest time I've ever tested for this test, being slightly faster than the old King, which was the Draugr. Now before we move on to the Walton, here are the off-road capability scores for both the regular and the HSW monstrosity, and you can see the scores are pretty much exactly the same throughout, with the exception being the first and last obstacles, which of course benefit from an extra power that the HSW upgrades provide. And honestly, these are extremely respectable scores considering how small this vehicle is and its lower ground clearance compared to the other off-roaders in this game. For comparison, so you can see how good the monstrosity actually is, in terms of overall score, it rivals the Squatty and the Sand King SWB, which is extremely impressive. Continuing to the Walton, so starting off with the incline test from a flat surface, 
The Walton does lack power and torque compared to the Monstrosity, and only makes it to red block number 5, which gives it a 5 out of 10 for stage 1 of this test. For stage 2 of this test, which is started at an angled position, it of course does a little worse and only gets to red block number 4, which gives it a 4 out of 10. If we take both those scores, we get an average of 4.5 for the incline test. Next up we have the dirt incline test. So with decent acceleration and great grip, it makes it to the top without any hesitation, which gives it a 10 out of 10. Continuing to dirt braking, which is very impressive, stopping well before the markers at the bottom, which gives it a 10 out of 10. I did not expect the Walton to have that good of brakes, but it does. Rock crawling is where the Walton really shines. That seems to be its main strength due to its perfect wheelbase in my opinion and ground clearance. It surprisingly does not scrape at all through all three obstacles, which gives it a 10 out of 10 for stage one. Very impressive. And for stage two of this test, which is subjectively scored, it goes up pretty much anything you throw at it. With zero hesitation whatsoever, it gets a very well-deserved 10 out of 10 for this test. And of course, the average of the two scores here is going to be a 10 out of 10. Powertrain from the Walton is pretty good. However, we do see wheel spin from the driver's side rear wheel. And as we progress further up the obstacle, we can see some wheel spin from the passenger side front wheel. I can't give it any higher than an 8 out of 10 for this test. Continuing to bumper clearance, the Walton has excellent bumper clearance due to how high off the ground it is. It does not scrape at all, giving it a 10 out of 10 for this test. Suspension travel is good, but not the best, and the main reason for this is because of its normal ride height compared to how much it travels beyond that. So according to the markers, it gets a 5 out of 10. High speed stability is excellent as you can imagine, but it's not perfect compared to vehicles like the Draugr, etc. It gets a 9 out of 10 for this test. Next up we have deep water testing. So for stage 1 of this test, it makes it to the end, which gives it a 10 out of 10. Moving on to stage 2, which is the deeper side, it unfortunately only makes it to red block number 8, which gives it an 8 out of 10 for this test, which is just wild considering the smaller monstrosity was able to make it across. But anyways, if we take both those scores, that gives us an average of 9 for the deep water test. And lastly, we have the dirt acceleration test. So again, this path is roughly a quarter mile long. Using the handbrake launch, it gets a 13 second quarter mile, which honestly, that's pretty good considering this isn't some crazy high speed off-roader. That gives it a 7 out of 10 for this test. And before we get to the last vehicle of this test, which is the Rattel, here is the score of the Walton, so an 82.5 out of 100, and we're going to compare it to the Monstrosity here. You can see how much their scores vary throughout the obstacles based on the different strengths and weaknesses that they have, but ultimately the Walton is the better overall off-roader. Alright, and lastly, on to the Rattel. Now before we start, I want to mention that the Rattel is not a 4x4, it is actually rear-wheel drive, so do keep that in mind. Anyways, starting off with the incline test, it makes it well past red block number 6, which gives it a 6.5 out of 10. For stage 2 of this test, it makes it to red block number 5. If we take both those scores, we get an average of 5.75 for this test. Next up, we have the dirt incline test. So you can see it does struggle a little bit with wheel spin since it's rear wheel drive, but it still makes it to the top, which gives it a 10 out of 10. 
continuing to dirt braking, it has excellent brakes. That gives it a 10 out of 10 for this test. Rock crawling, it does very well due to its ground clearance and torque. It only scrapes once during this entire test, which gives it a 9 out of 10. And for stage 2, which is subjectively scored, it doesn't really struggle at all, but in some situations it does struggle due to its rear-wheel drive configuration, so the most I can give it here is a 9 out of 10. If we take both those scores, we get an average of a 9 out of 10 for this test. Powertrain is surprisingly really good considering its rear-wheel drive. We see some very slight wheel spin from the driver's side rear wheel. It gets a very impressive 9 out of 10 for this test. Bumper clearance is obviously no issue at all for the Rattel. You can literally do this at high speed and still not scrape. It gets an easy 10 out of 10 for this test. Suspension travel is very impressive for the Rattel. According to the markers, it gets a 7 out of 10 for this test. And something I find pretty funny is that the Trophy Truck got an 8 for this test, and the Desert Raid received a 9 out of 10 for this test. So the Rattel sits just below those two, which makes sense considering this is a buggy. High speed stability is absolutely perfect. It's like the obstacles aren't even there. Just really impressive. Gets a well-deserved 10 out of 10 for this test. On to deep water testing. So for stage one of this test, it makes it to the end, which gives it a 10 out of 10. Moving on to stage 2, which is the deeper side, it unfortunately only makes it to red block number 8, which gives it an 8 out of 10 for this test. And this was the same case with the trophy truck and desert raid I tested a while ago, which makes sense. But anyways, if we take both stage scores, that gives us an average of 9 for the deep water test. And lastly, onto the dirt acceleration test. Using the handbrake launch, it gets a very impressive 12 second quarter mile which gives it an 8 out of 10. And again, this matches the Trophy Truck and Desert Raid. I'm pretty sure you see the pattern here, but it doesn't quite meet the speed of the Draugr, or of course the HSW Monstrosity. So here is the score for the Rattel, a very impressive 87.75 out of 100. That surprisingly places it right between the Trophy Truck and the Desert Raid, and you can see how similar a lot of the obstacle results are. But anyways, here are all the four scores for the three new off-roaders so that you can compare. Where not surprisingly, the Rattel does have the highest score of the four. Also, here's the comparison from all the vehicles I've tested so far from all the different classes. And you can see that the Monstrosity sits in 19th place. The HSW variant sits in 15th place. The Walton sits in 13th place, and the Rattel sits at a very impressive 3rd place. However, the Draugr from last year's Summer DLC still remains the overall king. So, are any of these new off-roaders in this DLC worth it? Well, honestly, the Monstrosity is really only useful if you have the HSW upgrade, so you have to be on current gen. So on a normal rally-esque off-road track, yes, it will be the king for sure because of its sheer speed and handling. However, if you have a track that has very intense obstacles, you definitely don't want to pick the monstrosity because of its lack of ground clearance. Now in regards to the Walton, it's a good off-roader, but it's sort of in that performance area of the car, car 4x4 and the Riata, so it's not really all that worth it, especially at its price. And lastly, the Rattel. So, I mean, it's basically a reskin of the Trophy Truck and Desert Raid, but with a little more power. However, the downside being that it's rear-wheel drive compared to the 4x4 of the other two. Honestly, if you already own one of the top six off-roaders, minus Liberator, of course, you really don't need to buy the Rattel. Personally, I'd buy the Draugr if you don't already own it, and then also the HSW Monstrosity if you're on current gen, because 
obviously for those types of less intense tracks it'd be useful for that and then the Draugr would be the one you want to pick for really more intense off-road tracks. Well, that's it, guys. Hope this was helpful. Remember, the playlist for all the other vehicles I've done will be down below in the comments and also the spreadsheet and all that good stuff. So thanks for watching, guys. Hope this was helpful, and I'll see you in the next one.